$2 million probe into misconduct of Durham cops has resulted in nothing. Locals decry critical nursing shortage in remote First Nations communities. Recall of almond, cashew and oat milks made by silk in great value. One woman bilks the civil service for $250,000 and for some reason it took the police to discover her timesheets were fraudulent. And Hungary and China meet to discuss road to peace in Ukraine. Good morning. It's Wednesday, July 10th. I'm Nora. Here are your headlines. We start this morning in Durham region, where what was supposed to be an investigation into corruption, cronyism and harassment at the Durham Regional Police Force has seemingly produced nothing but a two million dollar expense. The CBC's Julie Ayrton reports that the investigation has taken five years. Starting in 2019, the original intent was to look at quote-unquote issues within the force. Many senior leaders have retired or resigned, and the commission itself that is looking into these problems is set to end. There had been a ton of misconduct allegations. Bullying and intimidation, cronyism and retaliatory discipline were all normal within the force. There were also allegations that the cops were doing crime. There was also a complaint related to, quote, horrific domestic abuse allegations, unquote, that was made by Sergeant Nicole Whiteway. Her superiors and colleagues conspired to make the issue worse in some way that Ayrton doesn't actually spell out. Paul Martin, Uday Joswal, Todd Roller, and Nick Lisi were all identified by Whiteway as problems within the police force. You might remember Joswal's name as Ottawa Deputy Chief, a position he moved to after he left Oshawa, where he was then nailed by sexual harassment allegations. You will also remember that it was the Durham police who chased someone onto Highway 401 the wrong way, resulted in a family being killed and the suspect also being killed. For everyone who thinks that police reform is possible, I point to Exhibit A, this investigation. Next to northern Manitoba, where a nursing shortage is causing havoc on the health of northern communities across the province and across Canada. The National Observer's Matteo Similaro reports that Michael Yellowback, chief of Manto CP Cree Nation, explains that there are only two nurses for his community of 1,000 people. If one of the nurses is sick or has had a flight cancelled, which is common, they often are down to just one and even no nurses at all. Just a few days ago, a young man had a medical emergency and died in the community. The nursing station was subsequently closed to give the nurses some rest for what they had just experienced. As for doctors, they only visit about twice per month. Member of Parliament Nikki Ashton got data on the nursing shortage among remote First Nations communities and found that in Ontario and Manitoba, there is a 60% vacancy rate at nursing stations. Ottawa says that they're trying to fix the issue, but it's led to an over-reliance on part-time nurses. Where Indigenous Services Canada employs 60 full-time nurses in Quebec, Ontario, Manitoba, and Alberta in remote nursing stations, they employ 392 part-time nurses. Next, are you someone who drinks Silk brand non-milk milks? There is a recall on some kinds of silk and great value plant-based refrigerated beverages, as there is fear that they've been contaminated with listeria. Miriam Katawatsi from CTV News reports that there have been nine cases confirmed linked to the outbreak. If you are very young, very old, pregnant, or have a weak immune system, you should be particularly concerned about avoiding these milks. Irritatingly, Katawatsi doesn't list the kinds of drinks to avoid, though does go through the flu-like symptoms you might experience. You should avoid great values almond beverages, unsweetened original and vanilla, and a whack of beverages from silk, a bunch of almond-based drinks, coconut, oat, and almond and cashew drinks. Google Listeria Outbreak CFIA Silk to find out if anything more specific than this is something that you might have in your fridge and you should toss. 
Next to a story of fraud in the federal government, Clara Elaine Visser has been charged with defrauding eight government of Canada departments and Crown Corporations for some $250,000. Visser overbilled the groups through fraudulent timesheets between January 1st, 2020 and June 30th, 2021. And, you know, actually, I say good for her. Everyone was so busy with COVID. How did she manage to stay so focused? Now, for some reason, discovering this fraud took an RCMP investigation and, you know, not just talking with the people who hired her to do the work and examine what the work was that she did. This is what the RCMP did. Quote, the RCMP obtained statements from prime contractors while examining timesheets to confirm the consultant had overbilled the government of Canada on separate contracts, unquote. Sounds like someone was just not doing their job as a manager, and it really shouldn't have taken the cops to make these phone calls to figure this out. The article from Josh Pringle at CTV doesn't say which departments we were talking about, what kind of work that Visser was engaged in, and how on earth she managed to not be caught by the people who are paid to be overseeing her work. It suggests that there's other problems within the civil service and how they deal with contractors, but we don't get into that. Instead, we get this as the official line from the RCMP, quote, it demonstrates that we are committed to keeping our nation safe by protecting the integrity of the federal government and preventing the abuse of taxpayers' dollars, unquote. Guys, who exactly was made unsafe by this person? Anyway, okay, whatever, cops. Mm. And finally, Xi Jinping and Viktor Orban have just met to discuss possible ways to open dialogue between Russia and Ukraine. The Hungarian prime minister had just been in Ukraine and Russia to drum up support in both countries for his ideas. Orban is currently acting as the rotating president of the European Union, though many in Europe were not super happy that he met with Putin last week. Back in May, China and Brazil released a six-point peace process for Ukraine. This is not something I had heard about before this article. The plan is based on these guiding principles, according to Global Times. Quote, no expansion of the battlefield, no escalation of fighting, and no provocation by any party, and stating that dialogue and negotiation are the only viable way out of the crisis, unquote. When Orban met with Vladimir Zelensky last week, Zelensky said that Hungary isn't a major world power and therefore could not broker a peace process between Ukraine and Russia. He said that he didn't think that there were many countries in the world who could, beyond the U.S. and China. The U.S.'s John Kirby said that he didn't think that the meeting with Xi was productive and that the meeting concerned him. Orban opposes Western military aid to Ukraine, reports Al Jazeera. Hungary has blocked, delayed, and watered down attempts within the EU to help Ukraine or impose sanctions on Russia, putting Orban into a pretty awkward place in trying to negotiate this. Orban's next trip is to Washington for the NATO summit. If you're going to be a far-right weirdo, I guess you might as well make things interesting. Those are your headlines for Wednesday, July 10th. I'm Nora. You're listening to this podcast at sandyandnora.com on the Real News Network podcast feed and anywhere you get your podcasts. I hope you have a wonderful Wednesday and I'll talk to you tomorrow.